definitely up as a speaker. Now, when we have these workshops and these events and these keynotes, a lot of people are like, where is it? That's back in 2018, Chicago. So I'm not even <laughs> doing all this now. I might feel a shit again like that. But I come to teach and, and to share. It's trying to be more, a little more relaxed. I'm not in competition mode. People who just competed, I'm sure they are relieved and they were the people who were on the stage, yeah. not on stage to perform. A uh, stage to share and to educate and to one here in Chicago in 2018. Asia, 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 Asia. I was in the ballpark. Asia, Asia, Asia. Like Fantasia. Right? So it's good to see you guys. It's good to see everybody who's actually there in Chicago. Is anybody there to witness it? Oh, so if you were not there, you missed her story. History. Her story being made because it was not only three women, but three women minorities. It was myself, I'm of African descent. It was Sherry Sue, who was from China. And it was Anita Fane Taylor, who was African American as well. She's out in Florida. So it was a lot of big things going on that year. We had a lot of fun. Great, we're ready to rock and roll. So as you can see, level up, how to reach higher heights as a speaker. Even though someone is a world champion of public speaking, or even if someone is an all-time outstanding speaker, you can always level up. There is no limit. The sky is the limit to how you can grow as a speaker. You can go to the next one. So the question is, do you really want to level up? Do you want to or do you not want to? Or are you okay with where you are? Because some of us can do that. I don't want to go out. I don't know where I am. I got 37 ETMs. I've been in Tulsa Masters for 10 years. I'm, I'm good. I don't even have a PhD. If you don't want to level up, then this may be your nap time. This is going to be a long night. I, this is not for you. Go ahead and close your eyes. Get ready to dancing later. But if you really want to level up as a speaker, or if speaking doesn't apply, whenever I use the word speaking, put it somewhere else in your life. If you don't want to level up as a speaker, think about some other area of your life where you would like to improve, where you would like to enhance, where you would like to grow, where you would like to be the best version of yourself. It doesn't have to be speaking. It can be anything. <laughs> so how do you level up? What is it going to take? What does that say? Our work is going to take work. I don't know any person in here who's ever achieved a goal easily, who's ever done something of value, who's ever completed something, uh, some type of high achievement without putting in the work. So it's going to take work. And what does work mean? You can hit that. Sacrifice. Some people don't want to hear it, but it's true. It's going to take sacrifice. What does that mean? You're going to have to give up something. In order to get something, you're going to have to give up something. If you want to be healthier, you might have to give up smoking. If you want to be attractive to opposite sex, you might have to give up on sweatpants on those lazy, lazy days. <laughs> If you want to have body goals, you want to give up McDonald's. So you're going to have to sacrifice. You can hit that again. The next one is discipline. Discipline. Boy. You're going to have to have the mindset to say no or to say stop or to say, hey, I can't do that because I need to do this. Going back with those same examples, if you want to have body goals, you're going to have to have the discipline to maybe make a food plan or a meal plan to prep those meals every single week so you don't get tempted when you're hungry to go to uh, Chick-fil-A to go to <laughs> Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell and say, mommy, eat this salad and eat rice cakes. Or if you are in pursuit of marriage or something like that, you're going to have the discipline to not be out here playing like a player or play it and really, <laughs> and really focus on dedicating that time and energy into dating the right people. So it's going to take discipline, that saying no, that saying stop, that's being focused, laser focused, and having a mindset to do everything you need to do in order to reach that goal. We can hit the next one. And that's going to be pain. It's going to hurt. Not in a negative way. I'm going to scare you. But let's go back to the body goals. 
If you have not been to the gym for three years and you go and you start hitting them push ups or you hitting them weights, the next day you're not going to be able to look. <laughs> so it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful in some ways. Now, if he was here last night, this <laughs> deep work. <laughs> okay, great. So leveling up, leveling up is going to take work. No pain. No. Hello, somebody. Y'all rocking with me. I don't have to do that. I can do that. Boop. And we've all heard this quote before. In order to do something you've never done before, you have to. I said that wrong, didn't I? In order to achieve something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. Somebody give me an example of that. What does that look like? What does that even mean? If you want to achieve something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. Anybody have an example of that? Oh, I'm going to make y'all think this evening. I'll wait. I used to be a teacher. <laughs> well, I've been trying, well, not trying. I've just been procrastinating to put my podcast out. Mm. Yeah. Right. So I need, I need to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I've never done it. Right. I've done podcast interviews, but my, inter my, my own podcast. Mm -hmm. For the podcast. Yeah. We're going to speak it into existence. So if you've never done a podcast before, you're going to have to, one, figure out the technology. Where, what do I need? Do I need a microphone? Do I need some type of super fast internet? I got to figure out how to get guests on my show. I have to figure out how to do this. And those are things that I've never done before. But if I do the same things that I've been doing, I'm not going to have the podcast. So I think that was a great example. Thank you for sharing that example. But whatever it is you're thinking of doing, you're going to have to get outside of your comfort zone, right? Get outside of your comfort zone. That's all leveling up is, is getting outside of your comfort zone. We are so comfortable with where we are, especially us as Toastmasters. Raise your hand if you've been a Toastmaster longer than two years. That's the majority of us. We're comfortable. Now, out of all those hands... I don't know, it was a lot of y'all last night. How many DTMs do we have? Okay, District 103 is different. <laughs> but even in Toastmasters, we get inside our comfort zone. We get comfortable with just District 103. We get comfortable with just Illinois. And we forget that Toastmasters is an international organization. How many of us have visited, now that it's hybrid and online, how many of us have visited other clubs in other countries virtually? Mm, comfort zone. Wee you, wee you, comfort zone. <laughs> so as Toastmasters, we get a little bit comfortable doing the same things and meeting with the same people. So that's a challenge for us. I challenge you in the month of May to visit at least one Toastmasters club that is not in the United States of America. And no, I'm not telling you to go buy a ticket to Zimbabwe. I'm saying go on the Toastmasters.org website and just... Tr Look up a club in a different country, maybe a country you've always wanted to visit. What's somebody's dream destination to visit? Italy, Italy, yes. What else? Where else? Greece, yes, yeah, somewhere in Africa. Type it in up there. It's, we already know it's hundreds of thousands of clubs all over the world. Go to the website, find one. Everybody's virtual now. Visit. And when you do, send me a screenshot. And I'm going to put, put together a uh, collection, and the next time I meet you guys, we'll have a little parade. Y'all did a lot of those virtual parades, right? So challenge yourself to visit a Toastmasters club that is not in the United States in the month of May. That's one challenge, getting out of your comfort zone. Boop, boop, boop. Mm. <laughs> there we go. No. Next one. All right. So when was the last time you got outside of your comfort zone? Does anybody want to share? When was the last time you really got outside of your comfort zone? Mr. Kareem, I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, besides this contest, uh, skydiving. Uh, so I am scared of heights. Uh, so me and heights do not get along whatsoever, but for some reason I decided I wanted to go skydiving. 
and that is the biggest hike <laughs> that you can do. But I had to step outside of my comfort zone, one, because I'm scared of heights, but two, because I did it by myself. All right, I don't think anybody's gonna beat that, so <laughs> we'll move on. But yes, doing something that is completely out of the norm, and I'm sure you stretch yourself, and I'm sure you have more amazing stories, you probably have the footage, and it changed your life, and it made you grow as a person, and it makes you more exciting, and it makes you more cool. The last time I stepped out of my comfort zone <laughs> was last year in March of 2022. Y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> yes, I joined the United States Air Force Reserve. But even as a reservist, I still have to go through the same exact basic training as those in active duty. Why did I join the military? It was on my bucket list. I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to do it. I wanted to say, hey, I don't want to be on my deathbed talking about, dang, I wonder what would have happened if. So I stepped outside of my comfort zone and as a person who was much older <laughs> than everybody else, I learned so much. I learned a lot, and I surprised myself. I surprised myself with the things that I learned. Probably similar to you, when you're falling 2,000 feet, <laughs> you realize, like, all right, well, when I get to the ground, I probably should do this, 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 and this, and it just stretches you as an individual. So, oh, that's my husband, y'all. <laughs> yeah, his name is Chris. But that is me at, our gra at the graduation for the uh, United States Air Force basic military training. So when I got, side got outside of my comfort zone, I realized that I was a leader. I never considered myself a leader before going to the military. I always thought I was a great speaker, and I always thought that I had talent. But if you asked me if I was a great leader, I would have said no. Anybody else used to feel like that maybe? Let's use Toastmasters, for example. When you first joined Toastmasters, you're like, nah, you know, I'm not really a leader. I'm a TLI, no, I'm okay. I don't want to be a secretary. And you probably tried to stay in the background, right? You probably, no, nah, I'm cool. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give my all. I'm going to give my speeches. I'm going to do my pass. But no, nah, I'm not when they ask for leadership. But people see it in you. People see it in you. They, say, they see you showing up. They see you always going the extra mile. They see the natural talents that you have. And then they ask you, hey. <laughs> We need a treasurer. <laughs> you ready? You, you, you ready? And then you kind of get what? Voluntold is the word? You get voluntold. That was similar to my experience in the military. But being almost 18 years older than the, the average age, I was going to be a leader regardless. And being a mom, I was going to be a leader regardless. I tried to go in and say, hey, I'm just going to do what they asked me to do. I'm just going to kind of sit back in the background, but my military training instructor pointed to me one day and said, you're dorm chief. Anybody else ever been to basic military training? No? Oh, okay. I thought it was more common than what I thought. I thought at least one of us would have been in the military. That's okay. Now I can tell you whatever I want to tell you because you don't know. <laughs> but no, he said, you're dorm chief. And I was like, what? I, I was trying to stick in the background. I wasn't trying to stick. I was trying to get in, get out, do my time and be done. But... Once he said your dorm chief, which is just like the, the like a club president, your dorm chief, I have 50 other ladies to worry about. And now it's my responsibility to make sure we're making these beds every morning together because you can't make a bed by yourself. The military is all about teamwork. You can't go to the restroom by yourself. You always have to have what's, what's called a, um, it's slipping my mind right now, a, uh, not a buddy, uh, I, it'll come to me, but you have to have a teammate with you at all times in basic military, military training. And then I learned how to lead other, other groups of people. So I have 50, we have a brother flight, I have 50 young men who I had to lead as well, just making sure I'm in front of the, the flight and, you know, <laughs> it feels weird to say that now. <laughs> but making sure I'm on my A game because everybody is watching me. So that's how I stepped outside of my comfort zone, ended up graduating honor grad. That just means I was in top physical shape. That just means I scored high on the test to graduate. That just means I was an outstanding leader. So I learned, ooh, give me some snap. Crystal Waters, snap for me. Thank you, because I sure was snapping for you last night. At the hotel. I mean, yeah. but <laughs> All right, so I want us to take this time to just think Verbally, if you want to write it down in your phone, that's fine. But think about your level up list. Can we play that song while we, the, the YouTube video that was pulled up already? It should be in there. 
So I just wanted to take maybe two or three minutes to write a level up list. And that's just things in your life that you want to level up in, areas in your life that you want to level up in. And I know that somebody's like, I know what I want to level up in. Yeah, but tomorrow when you get home, you're probably going to forget everything. So just write it down. It could be a list of one to five things that you want to improve or enhance in your life. It could be public speaking. It could be in your relationships. It could be with your children. It could be with your education. It could be with your style or fashion. It could be with reading books. I know we have goals of, of reading books. It could be body goals, diet, nutrition. I just want us to take maybe two or three minutes and write down some of the things that we want to level up on in our lives. Madam Timer, can you give us two minutes? good volume for thinking. I see a lot of people's feet tapping. It's so funny. <laughs> How we doing, Madam Timer? Oh, three seconds. Three, two, what? Hey. <laughs> All right. Does anybody want to share what you have? Volunteer, get voluntold. I got the mic. I'm going to put it in somebody's lap. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yes, ma'am. The short list is travel, and then uh, income, start a notary business, and then uh, boundaries, I want to level up in my boundaries, and then I just have better relationships, and just in bettering all of my relationships. Um, I said my friendships. Um, my career and investments. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got the mic, I can do it. <laughs> you go ahead. Uh, I want to level up in uh, areas related to uh, my education, like learning other languages. Can I pick on you, William? Oh, sure. Yay! Did y'all hear a speech last night? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> now, I didn't make a list, but I'll uh, spontaneously generate one. Like <laughs> a <laughs> chat GPT. One is I want to keep going to uh, uh, Toastmasters uh, clubs on a regular basis. Two, I want to uh, uh, look up and contact an international uh, Toastmaster Club within the next seven days. 
and I'm going to sign up for the uh, International Congress in the Bahamas. Oh, he making y'all look bad. He making y'all look bad. If you don't have a list, and William has a list of things that he wants to do, not only just period, but in the next seven days, you better level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. All right, where are we with our slides? So I hope you created something. I hope you wrote down something or took a mental note of something. I don't want you to leave this conference just to say, hey, I saw some world champions speak. What can you take from it? What are you giving to it? What, are you, what effort are you putting into it? What are you taking away from it? Don't just be a body sitting. Actually leave with something. Actually come here with anticipation and expectation to take something home that you learned. You may not absorb everything, but take something with you. Take something with you. Oh, perfect. If you would like that, I didn't get anybody's email address. I got one person email, email one person's email address yesterday. So if you want the five tips for delivering a knockout speech, it's a downloadable PDF. Give me your email, I'll give that to you. We can go to the next one. It should say, let's get started. Yep, there it is. What is it, number 11? Yeah. Now we can go to number 12. <laughs> All right, so this is just a little bit about me if you don't know me already. Everybody knows the first one. I am a certified life coach, confidence, accountability, and career development coach. I used to be a teacher. I taught human growth and development and child development, which is under the career, technical, and education department. And I'm also inbound marketing certified with HubSpot. Anybody familiar with HubSpot? Yes, free certifications. Hello, somebody. I'm all about that free 99. I have a Bachelor of Arts in PR and Marketing, working on an executive MBA, and I just got married last year. I know I keep saying that, but I'm excited, and I just want y'all to keep me in y'all prayers because marriage is hard. <laughs> it's beautiful, but it's... And, and let's stop there for a second because that, that's an area where I had to level up. Like I mentioned last night, I thought marriage was the finish line. Like, to say I did it was like, yeah! But then it was like, you ain't dead yet. So that's kind of where it ends. That's where it ends, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So I had to level up because I, and it's funny how we change and how we mature and how we have certain beliefs and values when we're younger and then we go through something and that completely changes. I was all about self-love and love yourself and self, self, self and ooh, myself and self-esteem and me, 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 myself and I. If anybody is married, that's dead in a marriage. <laughs> that is dead in a marriage. It's not about you, it's about y'all. And going to marriage counseling, I'm proud of myself, but going to marriage counseling, you learn about a we identity. We always talk about identity and I need to figure out what I want to do with my life and my goals. It's like, uh, we walking together now. To become one, we walk together now. And so I had to level up in my marriage to understand that even though my last name still says Smith all over the, the world, I'm a Tyndall now. And we operate as one now. And we are our own family and we are our own bubble. And it's not about self, 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 self. It's about us, 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 uh, us, uh, us, us, every, uh, every. <laughs> we can go to the next slide. If you were here last night, you saw this last night, this photo of me and my mom and my sister, our little family, and I, I thought those two little girls were so adorable, especially, the, remember the girls who were doing the table topics? Oh, they were so sweet. The one who was like, this is my first time on a microphone and I love it. She's, it was so beautiful. But that was me when I was younger. When I was her age, it's nothing that I have, that I wanted to do more than to speak. And then as a teenager, I didn't know what speaking the, the profession of speaking was. Who knows a professional speaker when you grow up in the inner city? I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. P politicians and preachers, those are the only people who have a microphone. And then I learned about Toastmasters, and then the World Championship happened, and now I'm doing what I love. So that's just a brief overview of my speaking journey. We can go to the next one. So this is where we get into the meat and potatoes. Four ways to level up as a speaker. As I mentioned before, if it's not speaking for you, Put in whatever word you want to put in there. If it is the travel, put in travel. If it is relationships, put in relationships. You can use all these four in any area, any aspect where you want to level up. So the first one, the first key point, the first thing we're going to talk about is confidence. As a speaker, you have to have confidence. 
It's nothing worse than seeing a speaker who is not confident because you can't hear them. They're not making eye contact. You don't really know what they're going to talk about, and they just want to hurry up and get off the stage. So as a speaker, you have to have confidence. And that's how you feel about yourself overall, in and out, head to toe, top to bottom. The second thing is transparency. You have to have transparency as a speaker. Are you willing to get on this stage or whatever platform you're on and be vulnerable? The third point is failure. Failure, having that victor versus victim mentality. We heard about that, right? Victor versus victim. And finally, that should say key point number four, not key point number two, my mistake. Consistency, see, that was a failure, but it's okay. You bounce back, I'm a human. Consistency, habits, schedule, and organization. So these are four ways to level up in general, but especially four ways to level up as a speaker. We can go to the next one and then the next one. So, oh, you can't see it, but who knows what that is? The who? The judging ballot. So when we talk about confidence, I wanna talk about the way you look. So that is, it says physical. So that is in the, the, it's a judging item, it says physical, but the first word under physical is appearance. It's appearance, it's how you look, it's how you show up. Let's go to the next slide. It's how you look, it's how you show up. Because when you look good, you what? You feel good. Let me tell you a little story about the first time I left the country as the world champion of public speaking. The first time I left the country as a world champion of public speaking was in October of 2018. I went to Dubai. And at that time, I was a teacher. Y'all know how teachers dress? We wear flats, slacks, and a button-down shirt. That's it. Every day. All day. Mm, nothing more, nothing less. Done. So I'm going to all these different places and giving my keynotes, and I'm like, oh, this is so fun. So we get in the back of the car, and I'm with the, uh, the district director, and he was like, you're doing a phenomenal job. You're doing an amazing job, but you don't look like a world champion. I look like a teacher. And to me, I'm like, but I'm the world champion. But it's the perception. It's the perception. When you show up, how people are going to perceive you is how they're going to receive you. I just made that up. Ooh. How people perceive you, <laughs> y'all go to church. <laughs> How people perceive you is the way they're going to receive you. So when you come here on this stage, just looking like any old thing, looking like you dragged yourself out the bed, before you open your mouth, they're going to be like, hmm. What's she gonna talk about? Is she really serious? Mm, we don't know how to take you because you didn't take yourself seriously. So we don't know if we wanna take you seriously or not. Whether you have the best speech in the world and somebody's gonna argue, well, Steve Jobs used to wear his, his sneakers and his, Steve Jobs was the CEO of Apple. Are you the CEO of Apple? <laughs> okay, so when you, when, you, when you reach a certain level, you can do whatever you wanna do. But until we level all the way up there, let's put some thought into what we wear. 54% of confidence is based on your appearance. 54% of your confidence is gonna come from the way you look. And I learned that it does make a difference. When I wear heels, I feel more powerful than when I wear flats. When I wear this shirt, and I wear it a lot, so don't judge me, because I like it, it makes me feel good. Because <laughs> somebody gonna Google me, I'm like, did she have on that shirt? Did she have on that shirt? It makes me feel good, because it's a vibrant color, it's red, showing a little, little shoulder action. It makes me feel good, I like the bow. It makes me feel good. Wearing clean clothes, wearing neat clothes. I know my hair is not looking the very best right now, but I try to do something with it. I tried, I thought, tried to look curl, a little curl a little bit, but how you look, how you feel about yourself is going to affect how you perform. It's going to affect how you perform. If your shoes are too tight and you up here walking like this, <laughs> all you can think about is when you take taking these shoes off. If your shirt is too tight, if you're, if you're insecure about something, that could bother you while you're speaking. So pay attention to your appearance. We can go to the next one. And then somebody's going to be like, well, looks don't mean anything. Looks aren't everything. As a speaker, it means something. If you are going to be in front of people presenting, you need to look decent. And not just decent, kick level up. Kick it up a notch. Don't you wear no flats. <laughs> Unless you have some type of issue, for women speakers, it's, it's a thing. I mean, if you a man, you want to wear your heels, I ain't judging. But <laughs> 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 for
for women, it, it just, it, it makes us walk better. It, it lifts certain things. It makes it, it just makes you look feminine and it, and it makes you, it gives you like a nice sleek look. So I would say if you can physically throw on a pair of heels. So when people look at you, 55% of you, of our first impressions are made by what we see. Like I said before, before you get on this stage and turn on this microphone, they're looking at what you have on. That's 55% of the first impression. And then 38% is the way we hear your first words. That's why as Toastmasters, that introduction, that attention grabber is so important because 38% is gonna be the way we hear your first words. And 7% are the actual words you say. So before you even say anything, you said everything. Performance and the way you look go hand in hand. We can go to the next slide. You need to dress for success because when you show up looking a certain way, that means that you respect yourself. That means that you are responsible for how you look and for how you show up. And when you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you work well. When you work well, hopefully you get compensated very well. And it's just a cycle. Look good, feel good, work good, get paid good. I know that doesn't make grammatical sense, but that's okay. Let's go to the next point of transparency. And then we can go to the next one. So transparency, meaning we can see through the real you. We can see through to who you really are, sharing yourself on stage. How many of us are really afraid to be vulnerable on stage? We only want to share the highlights. We only want to share the good stuff. We only want to share the, the times where we were triumphant and we succeeded. We only want to share those. If you looked at my speech still standing, I shared three failures. Anybody remember any of them? <laughs> Teacher weight. Marriage, yep, school. school, one more. We sitting in it, <laughs> Toastmasters, yep, the contest. So I shared three times that I failed and I feel like that's what gave me one of the competitive edges because I shared my true stuff. I didn't just get up there and talk about how amazing I was. I talked about all these times I failed, dropping out of college four times, my first marriage not even lasting a year and thank God we going on the year Cinco de Mayo, whoo. <laughs> we made it, we made it, anywho. And then I, <laughs> that's my soul, that's my heart. But um, so the, the, the marriage and then the Toastmasters, I shared when I lost at the district level in 2015. So I really share a piece of myself and I feel like that was the connection to the audience saying, oh wow, she's not just up there and she's way out of reach, she's just like us. So be a human, be a person who is, I'm just like everybody else. Really be transparent, be open, be share, be share to share and then build trust. Because if, you, if, I, if I share something with you, that means you trust me and maybe you'll share something with me as well. Especially for our coaches out here or for our mentors or for people who want to coach other people with speaking. I'm not gonna share with you as, as somebody who is my coach if you haven't shared anything with me. So you can build that trust. Let's go to the next slide. Talking about failure, which kind of goes along with transparency. So like I mentioned, when you're a speaker, talk about your failures, right? Some of the best stories come from our failures. Don't just share your success stories, share the times where you weren't so successful. And then create those stories using the failures, but then at the same time, we know we like that dip, right? That's why I lost in 2015, because I kept talking about all these bad things that were happening. So share your failures, share the times that you didn't win, but then bring us up. <laughs> Bring us back up to how you overcame it. Okay, you dropped out of college four times, then you came back and graduated magna cum laude. Okay, you, 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 your first marriage didn't last, but now this one is going to places that you could never imagine. Okay, you didn't win in 2015, now you're the 2018 world champion of public speaking. So with those failures, please bring us back up. We don't wanna be sad when we walk out of that door. Well, hey, you know, my dog died, my cat died, I lost my job, uh, have a good night. <laughs> Bring us back up. Tell us about those failures, but then bring us back up. <laughs> we can go to the next one. So failing forward. We've heard that term, right? Failing forward. Fail forward. To fail forward means to, you can read it, purposely and deliberately use failure to find success. It's a conscious process that first requires us to give up the obsessive need to be perfect. 
Give up the obsessive, and I'm talking to somebody, I feel it in my hoshanda. Give up the obsessive need to be perfect. Give it up. Give it up. Let it go. I'm not saying don't strive for perfection, but if for some reason you don't hit it, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. We are all human. We can go to the next slide. The last key point is key point number four, consistency. Consistency. We can go to the next one. Consistency. And this is something that a lot of us need to hear. So let's stress, don't stop. If you don't win at the speech contest this evening, do not quit Toastmasters. Do not say, I'm never competing ever again. Oh, I was cheated. Mm, mm. Oh, I paid $500 for coaching and it didn't work. I'm done. Don't stop. It's a part of the journey. It's a part of the story. Keep going. Hang in there. You have to be dedicated, focused, and understand that whatever goal you have is a long-term commitment. This did not happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. I have to kick it back to marriage. Who's been married more than 20 years in here? 30. Ooh, 35. Ooh, 40. Okay, how, it's a tie. How long have you been married, ma'am in the pink? 44. 48, clap for that. Somebody better clap for that. There is no overnight success. That is a process. That is a marathon. That is something that you build on. That's hashtag relationship goals. Thank you. I need that. I need that. Oh, my God. I'll talk to you later. Do you have a couch? <laughs> so it's a long-term commitment. <laughs> Y'all going to make me go over time. Y'all better stop. I'm having too much fun. All right, so if we read this quote, I think it was by Ross Perot. Most people give up just when they're about to achieve success. They quit on the one yard line for sports fans. They quit on the one yard line. They give up at the last minute of the game, one foot from a winning touchdown. That means most of us quit right when we're on the brink of success. So whatever it is that you're doing, if you really want to do it, you have to to be consistent. That's probably gonna mean you're probably gonna fail a couple of times. You talk about failing over and over and over. I believe Ed said last night that he failed the bar six times before he finally got his law degree. I don't know how it works, legal test, I don't know. But before he became successful. For me, I tried to go to school four times before I finally finished. So it might look like a whole lot of loss and a whole lot of failure, but you are learning, you are gaining, you are strengthening yourself, and you, your story may not be for you. Your story may not be for you. So please don't give up when you are right there on the brink of it. You have to keep going. You have to be consistent. You have to understand that it is a marathon. It is not a race. Well, a race is a marathon. It's not a sprint. How about that? And we can go to the next one and then the next one. So let's recap. I wish I had more time with you guys, but I don't, I don't want to spend too much time here. So what we've learned so far, appearance matters, right? So the next time you speak, get a little iron, get a little steam, put a little, <laughs> put a little thought into what you're doing, make sure you, you, you're straight, no stains, no holes, no rips, no tangles. And look at, look, look, if you know that somebody is speaking, look them over. Look at them. Hey, Ramona, your tag is hanging out. Or hey, you got a little, put, put, like help each other out. Look at each other. Appearance matters. Then build trust through vulnerability. Don't be afraid to share yourself on stage. Next, inspire with success stories. So tell us about the failures, tell us about the fears, but then inspire us, bring us up with those success stories. And finally, whatever you're doing, stick with it. I said last night, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with somebody else. Get you an accountability partner. You don't have to get a coach, get a best friend. Join a Facebook group. It's going to be difficult to do it by yourself. So whatever goals you have, I urge you to stick with it, get some accountability, and make sure you are consistent. Because the day you give up, the next day you could have been on the, side of, on, the, on the other side of success. So please be consistent. Now it's up to you. Next slide. Now it's up to you. I sat here and I talked to you for 30 minutes or 35 minutes. I don't know how, where we are. But um, it's up to you now because you can have the best speakers come and speak to you and give you all the knowledge that they have and everything that they want to share with you has been shared, what are you going to do? 
So my call to action for you is for you to figure out what exactly you want to do in your life. I don't care if you're 81, 82, I don't care if you're 18 or 19, degreed or non-degreed, married, single, it doesn't matter. You have to figure out what you wanna do with yourself. You have to figure out what matters to you. You have to figure out what is going to make your life feel fulfilled and satisfied. Otherwise, you're going to watch other people live your dreams. If I would have quit in 2015, I don't know who would be the 2018 world champion. If I would have dropped out of college four times, I don't know who my son would be looking up to saying, oh, well, she finished and you didn't. So what are you going to do in order for you to feel great about yourself, to feel satisfied about life, to live life like it's actually worth living instead of existing, complaining, and looking at other people live the life that you want to live? Hmm? All right, so level up. I didn't get a chance to speak at the VIP session earlier because I respect my elders, so he kind of took the show there. But if we have any questions, now is the time to uh, ask those questions. Or if you don't have any questions, share your thoughts. You know what? Just, just, just email me because I ran over a little bit. So just email me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I went over. I got a little excited. But thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you soon. Wait a minute, don't go, don't go. Because I may have to make an executive decision here. And, not, and I'm not going to be afraid if I fail, if I get called on it. There, something is going on called the members moment in the Caspian room. But I don't exactly know what that is. So I'm just going to go over there. And if Ramona, if you want to take questions and people want to stay in here, I'll take responsibility for making that call. Well, if, if we want to just have a discussion, we don't have to have a, a, a formal Q&A. We can just talk about it. Maybe what you say inspires somebody who's sitting here. Uh, Ken Brzezinski, I noticed when you speak, you're very dramatic, your, your gestures. Huh? <laughs> but I, well, I, I, okay. I was wondering if that was something that came naturally to you as part of your, pro or did you develop that as a speaker? That's a great question. A lot of the feedback that I got internationally was she's so animated, she's so dramatic, she's over the top. Well, first and foremost, I was working with a lot of kids. And so when you're working with kids, it's, I had high schoolers and I'm teaching 198 students every single day. So if I get up there and I say, hey, this is how you nurture the children, and this is how you give the children what they need, and it's boring. So I have to be